So here we have a Tesla Model 3 long range. If you're new to the channel, I just purchased a 2018 BMW M2, and I also have had a Focus ST for coming up on four years now. I wanted to try this car out just because for my job, just constantly in and out of the car doing about 2,000 miles a month, I think this is a great option for a daily driver because it's, it's more affordable uh, than the Model X or the Model S. This thing, I mean, it just puts a smile on my face. It, you know, at first, I was a hater of the uh, electric cars with really no knowledge to hate. Um, I was just hating for no reason because they were faster than the already established uh, gas engines. And after watching a lot of reviews on these online from In people, feet, turn right to stay on round top drive. Yes, ma'am. And watching reviews from people who are gearheads, they love gas engines. Now turn right to stay on round top drive. And having them say how fun these cars are and how, wow, this is what driving is supposed to be, it made me think, well, I gotta drive one of these. So, <laughs> guys, I, I mean, I, I'm smiling so big right now, I'm kind of lost for words. The zero to 60 time on this is 4.4 seconds. I just bought an M2, okay? Supposedly that's a performance car, and it's kind of weird that it like echoes in here, it's weird acoustics. This is faster! Like, I'm not even good enough at driving my M2 yet to get a 4.5 zero to 60 time out of it. But this car, I just need to get in it and go. Now, am I saying that this is better and all that stuff? No, 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 because there's totally different uh, sensations you get driving the M2. Look at this road. Um, you know, with the M2, the exhaust and the shift field, there's so much more that comes with it. But for this, the reason I'm interested in Tesla is because for daily driving as a uh, medical device rep, um, th that's not fun driving. I'm just on the highway, so why not reduce my carbon footprint with emissions and everything? Oh, Jesus. Good luck with that. For the boring driving, use an electric car. And then for the fun driving, use the M2 and the Focus ST. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's where my mindset is. I think for city driving and all that stuff, this is what makes sense. For fun driving, uh, you know, I watched the, what was it, the Joe Rogan pod, or I listened to the Joe Rogan podcast with Elon Musk, and he was saying there's 2.5 billion cars on Earth. Even if we replaced 100,000 of them per year, which is Tesla's maximum capacity right now of producing cars on an annual basis, it would take us 25 years to replace all cars on Earth. And with the cost of them, that's not something reasonable for uh, most people to do. Plus, uh, there's oil companies, and the last thing they want is electricity taking over the world, and you know they're going to fight that. I highly recommend, there's a nice Porsche there, I highly recommend if you haven't driven one of these yet, you need to. Um, if you hate them, you think they're stupid, whatever, drive one, and then you can say that, because... That is so crazy! I mean, that's just incredible What? how this thing gains speed. There's no shifts. It's like a souped up golf cart. <sighs> you know, I'm not gonna say this is how driving should be because uh, I think there's an, a certain emotion attached to how you feel about certain cars based on the exhaust and the shifting and all that stuff. But for someone who doesn't care about driving, this is the route you should go because it's better for the environment well, the emissions are better for the environment. I've also heard the other argument, and I, I can't even cite a source, but I've heard that the, what it takes to mine for these batteries and create these batteries can be just as destructive, if not more, uh, than a normal combustion engine. I don't know the validity to that, and I'm gonna do more research on it, um, but there's that side of it as well. I don't wanna be totally blind to that whole thing. But oh my God, as you guys can see, this thing is very fast. One thing I don't like is there should be, like, I don't know why it doesn't have heads up display or something right here telling me how fast I'm going. You kind of have to glance just out of sight to look at your speed, but it's not that far out of your line of sight. Look on the car. Um, I have, and then we'll go on driving. I currently have the driving, the steering mode, and let's put it, I mean, it's in sport. We'll put it in standard, see what that feels like. 
yeah, it definitely loosens it up a little bit. Might actually feel uh, better, you know, than sport security. Right? So standard's probably nice. The regenerative braking is probably the thing you have to get used to most. Now, if you put it on standard for regenerative yeah, braking, right. you let off, the car really, it comes to a stop. That's one thing that's different with electric cars is uh, you have to get used to, um, You have to get used to how the car, when you let off, it doesn't glide, it actually will come to a stop, which is kind of cool um, for performance driving just because because it helps you brake. You come into a turn, you let off, and it, it does all the braking for you, which I think is kind of cool. This road is insane. It's perfect for this car, too. It's small and nimble. I don't know what the Model 3 weighs. I will put that at the bottom of the screen here so you can check it out. Um, what a great road, though. I mean, the blood just rushes to the back of your head. I can't imagine what it's like launching uh, the Model S in ludicrous mode that does zero to 60 in 2.4 seconds. That's mind bending. I've been in a car that's done it in three seconds and that's fast, but this feels different. The way the power comes on in this feels different. I've been in several cars that do it in the four seconds. I own an M2, it does it uh, in four and a half seconds but it doesn't feel like this. It just comes on differently and it's relentless and there's no break, there's no shifting. It's just, wow. Now you have arrived at your destination. I'm impressed. If you haven't driven one, if you're interested, you need to drive one. Rent it on Turo, go to the dealership. Uh, they, they'll they let you take it on a test drive on your own. Do whatever you need to do. It's worth driving if, you're, if you like cars. This is where the future's at. So we'll jump out here, we'll take a look at the outside of the car once I find some uh, good road, or f find a good spot to pull over. Steering wheel's a nice shape, uh, nice width to it. Very simple, um, if you wanna turn the volume up, you turn it up with your left hand. I'm sure you can configure all these settings, I don't know a ton about that. I don't really wanna go into the technicality of it because that's gonna take me a lot of uh, studying and things like that, and I just don't have the time for it. Uh, what I will say is very cool, though, something I did notice. You click down here on your... This road's in bad shape. But if you, for the air, if you want to shape the air, so here for the passenger, if I want to split it for the left and right, you can do that. Aim it down. Aim it up. Aim it down. There's a lot of really cool things that you can do. What, what a what fun this is though. And the line of sight that you get out of the windshield is incredible. You, there's, there's no engine obviously, there's a frunk and you just get to see forever. You can see the nose of the car, you can see exactly where you're pointing it and just have a blast. It seems like we've reached the top of the mountain now and we'll start to do, start to go back down all these driveways. I'd love to see some of the homes that are up here. We're in uh, currently in Hawaii in the island of Oahu. There's chickens all over the road. I love seeing chickens just wandering around. Get off the road. There you go. Why did the chicken cross? Do not get hit by the Tesla. Suspension's nice. The zero to 60 time on the performance edition of the Model 3 is 3.2 seconds. So you're talking about GTR fast out of their entry level car for $50,000. It's it's really insane. And the crazy thing is, is this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, what, if cars, these cars have been around I think since 2012 is when the Model S was released, 2012 or 2013. And this is how good they already are. Uh, everyone's hesitation with them is the range, uh, being only 300, 300 miles about with uh, the long range versions of these cars. The other issue is the charging time. I was in a, the exotic car dealership down here the other day and I was talking to the, the salesman about the uh, new Jaguar and he was like, I was like, so how long does it take to ch for this thing to charge up? He goes, you know, it's only 12 hours. It's like, only? 
the hell do you mean only? That's 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 a day. So what am I gonna do? Sit at the charger for 12 hours? It was just kind of like, what are you talking about? That's what where the Porsche Taycan coming out is really has an advantage because I think in 10 minutes it will charge 10 to 15 minutes it will charge 80% of its battery and once the range and the quickness of the battery charging advances which it absolutely is going to that's when these are going to start selling like crazy so I don't know I'm excited to see where these cars go yeah they're quiet there's no driving emotion but when you see how fun it is to aim and point and get that crazy acceleration out of turns um, I think you'd find it you'd be hard-pressed to find negative things to say about this car because it's it's just fun you I don't see how you could drive it and not be smiling so we're just gonna keep on climbing up this hill I thought we were at the top clearly weren't so we're gonna take a walk around, check the car out, um, and I'm gonna show you some things that I've noticed so far. So the first thing is, you'll notice these wheels. Now I think these are hideous. Uh, these add a 5% increase in range when you're driving at normal speeds. Um, so that's why these are on here. Now behind this is an aluminum, it is an alloy wheel. I'm not gonna pop it off, but I'll put a picture up on the screen here so you can see what's behind it. Because I've always seen these, the wheels that's behind it, and I thought it was a secret wheel for giving uh, Tesla referrals. Uh, if you're familiar with that process, basically if you give a certain amount of people referrals to Tesla and they purchase, you have access to secret wheels that aren't available to the public. Um, so there's actually a beautiful alloy wheel behind these, and again, 5% range increase, which is why they're on there. Um, some of the other things to open the car, press here. You have to unlock it first. Press here. Cool. And here's a look at the interior. Seats are very comfortable. It's a nice leather. It feels like a quality interior. The beautiful big screen. And then this like wood grain pattern. I guess it is wood. Um, and then the fully panoramic ceiling in the car. Uh, so back seat. So I'm six feet tall. This is how I have the seat. Let's go into the back and see how that is. Again, not having a drivetrain, they're able to have a flat surface back here, giving you a little bit more room. So there we go. I'm sitting with my knee. Look at that. I've got two or three inches in front of my kneecaps uh, to sit back here comfortably. Um, it's beautiful. You get a nice view out of the ceiling. Um, I have plenty of room. I could see being in a long trip and being comfortable back here. Arm rests, with, put drinks in, whatever. Uh, but it feels really nice. It, it, it's a quality interior. And one thing I always forget about Tesla is it's an American company. Uh, for some reason, you just, that just skips through my head all the time, I guess, um, for whatever reason. But yeah, the back of it's nice. There's two USB ports here. Uh, you have the air vents right here. Lots of room. You also notice that along there, there's an Alcantara insert. My M2 actually has has that as well. Uh, piano black gloss and then lead, leading up to the screen. It's also unique how simple the wheel is. There's no drive modes, there's nothing. It's all in that screen and it simplifies the wheel and I kind of like that. Here's a look at the back door. Um, same quality as the front. Now when you when you close these doors to open them up, you can you put your, that's how you put the window down. And then to open the door, you click this button, pops right open for you. There's a Miata. That would be a lot of fun on these roads. So here's a look at the Model 3. The door's opened up. Now let's open up the frunk. I'm not exactly sure how to do that. Frunk, frunk, frunk. <laughs> ah. Ah. -ha -ha. Never driven a car with a frunk. Actually, yes, I have, the NSX. There you go. You could fit pretty much nothing up here. Maybe a new pair of shoes. Tow hook. Let's open the trunk of the car. Boom! So there's a look at the trunk. For those of you who play golf, if you're wondering about the golf clubs, I am not confident that they will fit. You might still have to take your driver out, but you could at least fold the seat down and that would be good. But there's a solid amount of room back here. Um, oh my goodness, there's even more. Secret compartment. 
Yeah, so there's even a huge compartment down there you can throw things in. Um, and what's so cool about these electric cars is the fact that the batteries keep the center of gravity so low. So you have all this weight at the bottom of the car that just lets the car handle and be so planted, which is a, a big reason as to why they're so safe. Uh, I was listening to the salesman talk about the Model X and that it's, it's actually impossible for that thing to roll over because there's so much weight down low to get it to turn over. You'd have to flip it with a tractor or something. But yeah, there's a look at the car from the outside. Um, I'm really impressed so far. I think if you guys are considering getting one, you need to drive it. Yeah, they're a little expensive, but uh, right now with the government incentives on them, you can save like up to $7,000 off. Those aren't going to last forever either, so that's why it's kind of nice to do that now. But basically, you go into the Tesla dealership, you put down a $2,500 deposit, and that gets you locked in to secure one. Now, the car that interests me most is the Model Y that's coming out. It's based on the Model 3 chassis. Uh, it's about the same size, but it's an SUV, so you need a little more roof line. And this also has the 10.0 software update, so this has all the latest stuff. But again, I'm not going to go too into that in this video, uh, just because I'm not. I'm so new to Tesla. It's my first time driving one. I'm not the expert. There's plenty of those out there. So, uh, yeah, let's get this thing closed up and continue to drive it. Back, back on the road in the Model 3. My overall thoughts on the Model 3 so far, I mean, as you would expect from what I've said, it, I love it. It's It drives well, the quality seems nice compared to anything else that's out there, Mercedes, BMW, whatever. It doesn't have the features like, uh, you know, massaging seats or anything like that. Maybe it does. I, I don't want to speak for the Model S or anything like that because I don't know. Um, this is the entry level car, so it's pretty bare bones, pretty basic, but that's okay. Uh, it, it doesn't need it. it it's you're not really focused on that you're focused on the fact that you don't have to take this to a gas station um, and things like that now one nice thing is you're able to plan your trips uh, with where based on where the superchargers are so a lot of people are worried about oh well, I, how do I know if I'm gonna be able to fill the car or charge the car and all that type of stuff well you're okay because the superchargers the navigation will plan it so you hit those on the way. So that's one thing that they've already, you know, thought ahead for you. But yeah, Hawaii is beautiful. The Tesla is an exciting car to drive in Hawaii. And like I've said 35 times in this video, highly recommend you drive one of these. Uh, if you're considering buying a car, drive this first because it's it feels amazing. It feels like unlike anything else um, that I've ever driven. And I've driven a lot of cars. And you can still have fun in it. You can still take it to back roads or your favorite roads and go flying and experience those roads in a way you never could have with a normal combustion engine. You just, the power comes on maximum torque from zero RPM, from one RPM, and uh, that's, that's hard to replicate. soaked and covered in moss. It's like the last thing I want to do. That's a sick picture of that Range Rover right there. People just smiling, looking at me. They know what I'm doing. They're like, oh, that's Jeebs! I hope you guys are just enjoying the scenery like I am. This is... Got up here. Chicken. Chicken. Oh, he's got little chickadees. 